Researchers build brain-scale AI model using Exaflop supercomputer. Chinese scientists have built what they call a brain-scale artificial intelligence model based on one of its latest supercomputers featuring Sunway processors. The scholars claim that the artificial intelligence model with 174 trillion parameters could be used for a variety of applications starting from autonomous vehicles to scientific research. The system used is the Sunway Ocean Light, which is based on 96,000 nodes powered by Sunway's 390 core processors, featuring almost 40 million cores in total, with CPUs evolved from the previous generation processors. This machine was touted as one of the world's first exascale supercomputers, but since then, the claim about the FP64 performance has been largely debunked when it turned out that the scientists lowered precision of calculations, which the machine performed while doing work for the Gordon Bell Trophy, the Nobel Prize for Supercomputing. The Chinese team of researchers from the National Research Center of Parallel Computer Engineering and Technology call their AI model Bagualu, which means alchemist pot, since it includes 174 trillion parameters, which rivals the number of synapses in the human brain. Actual performance of ocean light is now claimed to be 5.3 AI exaflops, even though earlier it was said to be 4.4 mixed precision exaflops, which once again shows that the performance numbers of the system disclosed by the researchers are not really accurate. But even if the ocean light is slower than it's said to be, the work to create an artificial intelligence training model with 174 trillion parameters is gargantuan. The scientists reported that in order to get a decent performance with the BrainScale AI model, they had to introduce hardware-specific intranode optimizations as well as implement hybrid parallel strategies at an unprecedented scale. Considering the fact that Ocean Light features 96,000 nodes and nearly 40 million processing engines, optimizing hardware and software for this system is a big deal. The announcement about the unprecedented AI model was made weeks after Oak Ridge National Laboratory officially unveiled its Frontier, which was the world's first supercomputer with a performance of 1.102 FP6 exaflops in the LINPAC benchmark. It is also noteworthy that the Chinese National Research Center of Parallel Computer Engineering and Technology has not yet officially published performance results of its ocean light in the top 500 list of supercomputers. A new system lets robots manipulate soft, deformable material into various shapes from visual inputs which could one day enable better home assistance. Machines have become increasingly reliable with rigid objects, but manipulating soft, deformable objects comes with a laundry list of technical challenges. And most importantly, as with most flexible structures, if you move one part, you're likely affecting everything else. Scientists from MIT's Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory and Stanford University recently let robots take their hand at playing with the modeling compound. Their new system learns directly from visual inputs to let a robot with a two-fingered gripper system see, simulate, and shape doughy objects. The system, called Robocraft, could reliably plan a robot's behavior to pinch and release Play-Doh to make various letters, including ones that it has never seen. With just 10 minutes of data, the two-finger gripper rivaled human counterparts that teleoperated the machine, performing on par and at times even better on the tested tasks. Modeling the manipulated objects with high degrees of freedom are essential capabilities for robots to learn how to enable complex industrial and household interaction tasks like stuffing dumplings, rolling sushi, and making pottery. While there's been recent advances in manipulating clothes and ropes, the researchers found that objects with high plasticity like dough or plasticine was a largely underexplored territory. With Robocraft, they learned the dynamics models directly from high-dimensional sensory data, which offers a promising data-driven avenue for them to perform effective planning. By turning the images into graphs of little particles coupled with algorithms, Robocraft used a graph neural network as the dynamics model and made more accurate predictions about the material's changes and shapes. Typically, researchers have used complex physics simulators to model and understand force and dynamics being applied to objects, but Robocraft simply uses visual data. The inner workings of the system relies on three parts to shape the soft material. The first part, perception, is all about learning to see. It uses the camera to collect raw visual sensor data from the environment, which is then turned into little clouds of particles to represent the shapes. A graph-based neural network then uses said particle data to learn to simulate the object's dynamics or how it moves. Then, algorithms help plan the robot's behavior so it learns to shape a blob of dough, armed with the training data from the many pinches. A far more futuristic domain the scientists envision is using Robocraft for assistance with household tasks and chores. MIT scientists unveil the first open-source simulation engine capable of constructing realistic environments for deployable training and testing of autonomous vehicles. Hyper-realistic virtual worlds have been heralded as the best driving schools for autonomous vehicles since they've proven fruitful testbeds for safely trying out dangerous driving scenarios. Tesla, Waymo, and other self-driving companies all rely heavily on data to enable expensive and proprietary photorealistic simulators, since testing and gathering nuanced data usually isn't the most easy or desirable to recreate. 
To that end, scientists from MIT's Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory created Vista 2.0, which is a data-driven simulation engine where vehicles can learn to drive in the real world and recover from near-crash scenarios. What's more is that all of the code is being open-sourced to the public. Enter Vista 2.0, a data-driven system that can simulate complex sensor types and massively interactive scenarios and intersections at scale. With much less data than previous models, the team was able to train autonomous vehicles that could be substantially more robust than those trained on large amounts of real-world data. Then, the team was able to scale the complexity of the interactive driving tasks for things like overtaking, following, and negotiating, including multi-agent scenarios in highly photorealistic environments. To synthesize 3D LiDAR point clouds, the team used the data that the car collected, projected it into 3D space coming from the LiDAR's data, and then let the new virtual vehicle drive around locally from where that original vehicle was. Finally, they projected all of that sensory information back into the frame of view of this new virtual vehicle with the help of the neural networks. Together with the simulation of the event-based cameras, which operate at speeds greater than thousands of events per second, the simulator was capable of not only simulating this multimodal information, but also doing so in real time. This made it possible not only to train neural networks offline, but also to test online on the car in augmented reality setups for safe evaluations. With the multi-agency, both real and simulated agents interact, and new agents can be dropped into the scene and controlled any which way. The central algorithm of this research is how they can take a data set and build a completely synthetic world for learning and autonomy. It's a platform that they believe one day could extend into many different areas of robotics that rely on vision and complex behaviors. They're excited to release Vista 2.0 to help enable the community to collect their own data sets and convert them into virtual worlds where they can directly simulate their own virtual autonomous vehicles, drive around these virtual terrains, train autonomous vehicles in these worlds, and then can directly transfer them to full-sized, real self-driving cars. Brain tumor classification can become more accurate with the use of artificial intelligence and physiological imaging. Multi-class machine learning methods were used to analyze and classify brain tumors using physiological data from magnetic resonance imaging. The results were then compared with classifications made by human experts. Artificial intelligence was found to be superior in the areas of accuracy, precision, and multi-classification, among others, while professionals perform better in sensitivity and specificity. Brain tumors can be easily detected by magnetic resonance imaging, but their exact classification is difficult in this way. What's important to note is that this classification is precisely what's crucial for choosing the best possible treatment options. Now, a team of researchers has used data from modern MRI methods as the basis for machine learning protocols and assessed the use of artificial intelligence to classify brain tumors. The team of scientists at the Central Institute for Medical Radiology Diagnostics at St. Paulton University Hospital used both advanced and physiological MRI data for the study. Both methods provided enhanced insight into the structure and metabolism of a brain tumor and have allowed better classification for some time. But the price to pay for such a differentiated picture is enormous amounts of data that needs to be expertly assessed. To achieve their impressive result, the team trained nine well-known multi-class machine learning algorithms with MRI data from 167 previous patients who had one of the five most common brain tumors and had accurate classification using histology. A total of 135 so-called classifiers were generated into a complex protocol. These are mathematical functions that assign the material to be examined to specific categories. In contrast to previous studies, they also took into account data from physiological MRIs. This included details of the vascular architecture of the tumors and their formation of new vessels, as well as the supply of oxygen to the tumor tissue. The team named the combination of data from different MRI methods with multi-class machine learning radiophysiomics. In this, the now-trained multi-class machine learning algorithms were fed with corresponding MRI data from 20 current brain tumor patients, and the results of the classifications thus obtained were compared with those of two certified radiologists. The two best machine learning algorithms, referred to as adaptive boosting and random forest, outperformed the human assessment results in these areas of accuracy and precision. Also, these machine learning algorithms resulted in less misclassification than by the professionals, 